Hey, it's Sarah with Fit Healthy Moms, and today I'm going to tell you the four best exercises for female fat loss. So there's a million different things you can do in the gym, and a lot of times I see women doing things that really don't maximize their time in the gym, and I know you're really busy, and you don't want to waste extra time in the gym or spend more time there than you really, really need to. Um, and this is something that over time I've really learned with myself too. I can get in and out of the gym in like 20 minutes and have an awesome full body workout, but I'm really, really focused about what I do, and I choose my exercises very carefully to make sure that every single exercise I do is accomplishing many things at one time. So I'm not having to spend time doing exercises that work little tiny muscle groups like bicep curls or spending time doing things like crunches that just, again, isolate one small part of my body. Instead, I'm doing big things that incorporate my whole lower body and my core at one time or my whole upper body and my core at one time. So that way, I don't have to spend hours and hours at the gym every day. So the top four exercises for female fat loss to build lean muscle mass so that you're burning fat around the clock, not to big build, build big huge muscles because you have to eat a crazy pro, high protein diet to do that. But this is just for losing body fat, for building lean muscle mass, and building that lean muscle mass, mass that's really gonna support fat loss over time and may help you maintain fat loss over time. So exercise number one, squatting. Squatting is a great exercise because it incorporates so many muscles at once, which is why when you do squats, you feel like, oh, my heart rate's kind of getting up. It's because you're using so many big muscle groups that your heart has to work harder to pump blood to all those big muscles. If you think about the muscles in your legs, they're really big, bulky muscles. Even if you have lean legs, you have bulky muscles down there relative to the rest of your body or larger muscles relative to the rest of your body. So when you're doing squats, you're using the front of the legs, the back of the legs, you're getting some booty in there. Uh, and then additionally, you're always using your core to help you stabilize, especially if you're using additional weight above and beyond your own body weight. Some things to keep in mind when you're squatting, if you add additional weight in the form of dumbbells, you can just have them hanging at your sides. If you have a bar on your back, you want to be using a squat rack, so you don't want to be picking up a big, huge, heavy bar and throwing it on your back um, and getting a shoulder injury. You want to have a squat rack at the gym where you're stepping in, you can safely get under that weight and then walk yourself back and go into the squat. Um, a couple of issues with form with squatting. You want to make sure that your weight's always in your heels and your form always starts with your butt going back. And so you're never going to start with your knees going forward here. You're always starting with your butt going back. So really, really important, especially as you start to add weight and load to your squatting, which you do want to do over time. Something that I've been working on a lot this last year is making my squatting heavier so that I don't have to do as many reps. I'm maximizing my time in the gym that way, so I'm not doing a ton of volume. I'm doing heavier weight. It's actually really helped my whole lower body get leaner and stronger. I actually noticed that I have less cellulite. About a year ago, I started noticing cellulite on the front of my legs. Totally freaked me out. Um, so I've been doing much heavier squatting, and my legs are actually have, show a lot more muscle, less cellulite and fat, um, and because my thighs can kind of be my trouble area. So heavy squats is a really good thing as long as you're safe. So again, butt goes back, and then from here, you come down into your motion right here. So if I add dumb, a barbell up here, same idea. My butt goes back and then I start to come down. Or dumbbells at my side. My butt goes back and then I start to come down. Exercise two for burning fat is lunging. Very similar to squats because they burn or they use the same big muscle groups. So you're using the fronts of the legs, the backs of the legs. You're getting up into the butt when you lunge, which is why a lot of times it hurts to sit on the toilet the day after you do lunges. But the other really great thing about lunges is because you're moving yourself forward in space or back in space or to the side, you get inner and outer thighs as well. So you're moving, working those little um, adductor and abductor muscles, which are great. That means you never have to sit in that ridiculous machine that goes in and out with your thighs. I hate that thing. So you never have to do that again. It's a total waste of your time. Do lunges. I know that some people really have pain with lunges in the knees. Um, if you have any knee issues that can be a challenging exercise, so you might need to just stick with squats, or you can try reverse lunges. So reverse lunges is a step backwards, which helps with your knee alignment because sometimes forward lunging can be a little bit uncomfortable on the knees if you have a past knee injury. A couple things to be mindful with, with lunges, just like squats, once you master the movement with your body weight, you can add weight to it. And when you add weight, you wanna add dumbbells down at your sides, you can add a bar across your back, you can hold a kettlebell in front of you, so there's lots of ways to add weight. With your lunge, you wanna make sure you're taking a really big step forward, and then you're looking for 90 degrees at both knees here. So for most people, you can take that big step forward, drop the back knee, and then you have your 90 degrees. But if you're not sure, always watch yourself in a mirror a couple times just to make sure that you're getting that alignment. If you take too small of a step right here, this knee is gonna come way forward here and that's gonna really put a lot of force on that knee that's gonna potentially be uncomfortable and give you an injury over time. 
All right, exercise number three. So moving from lower body to upper body, the third exercise that's most significant and most helpful and beneficial for female fat loss is push-ups. I know not everyone loves them, but I promise you, if you can master push-ups, you will feel awesome, and you'll actually grow to like them because you can do them, and that's a really great feeling. It's a strong and empowering feeling. I used to hate push-ups. I have cried over push-ups, but now I like them. I love them. I do them all the time, and I actually I had a physical therapist ask me once when I had a shoulder injury, and I was upset about not being able to do push-ups. He said, why do you do them so much, and why would you want to do that many push-ups, and why would you do 100 push-ups in a workout? And I was like, dude, are you crazy? Because I can. <laughs> not many people can say they can do that. So it's a really empowering feeling to be able to do push-ups, and I really encourage all of my clients to master push-ups because it makes you feel strong and powerful, and that's a really important thing to feel in your daily life because there's a lot of things that maybe don't make you feel that way. So I feel like when it comes to exercise, it's important to have things that you can feel really confident about. With push-ups, you're working the chest, you're working the triceps, the shoulders, and in addition, in that when you're ever when you're in push-up position, you're getting a lot of core. So again, you don't have to do lots of crunches and sit-ups and those kinds of exercises because you're getting core in these big muscle group exercises. Um, similarly, with squats and lunges, you're getting lots of core in there to help keep you stable. Backing up to lunge for just a sec, anytime I go into this step here, if I'm wobbly at all, my core has to fire. So if I'm really strong through here, then I can plant that foot and lunge. Similarly, in push-ups, to maintain my form in push-ups, I have to keep my core tight, strong, and engaged. So as I come down here in the push-up position, if my core isn't engaged, then my hips are going to be way down here. I might be popped up way up here, but if I'm right here and my abs are tight, I can come down one solid movement in and out of my push-ups. Same thing from my knees, in and out of the push-up. If you're on your knees, just make sure your butt comes with you, that you're not booty up in the air, and then right here, which is not the proper way to maximize the benefit of the exercise. So exercise number four. If you really love push-ups, then you probably really love pull-ups. So the fourth exercise for burning the most um, fat as a female is pull-ups. And I know that pull-ups are incredibly challenging. It's something that I really struggle with. It's something that I don't particularly enjoy. But I make myself do them because they make me feel strong. They make me strong. And they also, between pull-ups and push-ups, I'm telling you, you can get some amazing arm definition. So those really pushing and pulling exercises are the basis for all of my upper body workouts. I never do bicep curls. I sometimes will do some isolated tricep work. Sometimes I'll do some isolated shoulder work. Most of my shoulder work comes in core stuff, like when I'm doing planks and those kinds of exercises. But I don't do little tiny exercises for my arms because I'm doing big exercises that incorporate so much of my upper body and so much of my core because that's the best use of my time. So pull-ups, with pull-ups, there's a lot of ways you can start on pull-ups where you're not actually having to just go and get on a bar and do a pull-up because 99% of females can't do that because we don't have a ton of upper body muscle. We have to really develop that over time and it can take a while. But you can with pull-ups get on the bar and put a chair out in front of you. I have a whole um, a whole other video on that on my Fit Healthy Moms channel that talks all about how to do pull-ups at home with a pull-up bar. It's like a $20 bar. Stick a chair out in front of you and you can pull with the help of your leg to get yourself up and over that bar and it works all the same muscles. If you don't have access to a pull-up bar, some other exercises that work those same muscles would be a lat pull-down machine that most gyms have, or any sort of dumbbell row. So from this position here, you've seen in some of my other videos, we work these muscles right here. These are working your back muscles as you pull those dumbbells up and squeeze the shoulder blades together. It doesn't work quite as intensely as pull-ups because you're not carrying your a portion of your body weight, but at the same time, that's going to fire the back muscles. So when you're looking for those exercises, for as much fat loss as you can get in just a handful of exercises at the gym or at home, you want to be doing squatting, lunging, pull-ups, and push-ups. And there's lots of variations with all those exercises. If you need any special requests for special variations because you're feeling bored, let us know at Fit Healthy Moms. We'd be happy to do a post just for you with all sorts of variations of those great exercises. So go ahead, get those exercises into your regimen so that you can be burning the most fat possible around the clock to build those nice lean muscles.